shoes that might have been danced in, now lifeless and misshapen. Intimate family portraits taken in a Lithuanian village that was annihilated. These are just some of the mementos from one of the darkest moments in human history. Items that are unflinchingly displayed at the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington. So since the museum opened its doors, how many visitors have you had? About 35 million people from all over the world. They come, says museum director Sarah Bloomfield, to a building deliberately designed to create a feeling of discomfort. Well, the architect, when you enter this building, he wants to send you cues immediately that you're in a different world. An oppressive world. Right. And he would say, like, a world turned upside down. It was President Jimmy Carter who, in 1978, envisioned a monument to commemorate the Holocaust. But when he asked writer Elie Wiesel, Nobel Prize winner and Holocaust survivor, to be in charge, he suggested a museum. It was your idea from the beginning to have a place where people would go and learn something, find out something they might not know. Not only that, some, a place where they would come and they would realize how much they don't know. In 1993, at the official opening ceremony, President Bill Clinton set forth the museum's purpose. To learn the lessons, to deepen our memories and our humanity, and to transmit these lessons from generation to generation. 20 years later, that mission is still being fulfilled, with visitors trying to fathom the Nazis' coldly calculated murder of an estimated 12 million human beings. This is one of the actual cattle cars that transported Jews and others deemed undesirable by the Nazis to forced labor camps and gas chambers. When I'm close to, to a breakdown, is when I see the children, when you think children, about the children who were killed. Children. My God, I see the pictures now of the children waiting. Why the children, my God, why the children? Ily Wiesel was just 16, barely past childhood himself, when he was liberated from the concentration camp at Buchenwald in 1945. It took him years to be able to write about it. There are no words, in truth. The enemy managed to push his crimes beyond language. Who could really describe what it meant standing in line to the gas chambers? Who can? But the museum has provided an outlet for many who lost so much. In commemoration of its 20th anniversary, there have been events across the country to honor World War II vets and survivors, a generation that is fast disappearing. I still have a lot of memories, small, but it was, it was memories of being hungry and thirsty and frightened. Eva Van Enken is donating a stuffed bunny died. that camp prisoners I managed to piece together for my her. Aunts, my uncles. And it's now 70 years old and decaying. And although my children are aware, their children won't be. So eventually it would have disappeared. So I really thought it was a better place here. In fact, the museum has opened a collection and conservation center to safeguard such artifacts. Uh, we have everything from concentration camp uniforms worn by the victims to the badges that they wore in camps. Curator Steve Luckert showed us an album that contains some of the few known photos of Joseph Mengele, the notorious physician who conducted brutal medical experiments on prisoners at Auschwitz. Even though there were people looking for him, he escaped justice. So he never paid for his crimes. 
And today, the Holocaust Memorial Museum stands as a reminder of what can still happen when evil goes unchecked. We realize that this is a gift, a strange way, the gift, the last gift. A gift how? Of the dead to the living. We leave you our story. And it's up to you to do something with it in order to save mankind.